Hello, I'm Simon and welcome to the third of my vlogs. Today, what I want to do is firstly start off by responding to a couple of points that have been brought up in videos I've seen recently and then take this opportunity to show you some things of what I consider to be quite good bargains that I've picked up at local car boot sales. Firstly, I'd like to respond to something Steve Benway brought up in his last Friday talkie. In fact, I think he was responding to someone else's initial question that he threw out to the gaming community, and that was whether the YouTube community itself is having any kind of effect on the price of retro video games. Um, I think this initial person who posed the question had been noticing that retro games had been increasing in price and getting to the point of being quite ridiculous. Um, I've found this myself in a few, few instances where uh, sometimes on eBay, ridiculously high buy it now prices, uh, sometimes in uh, shops or on market stalls, people have seemed to have priced games way beyond what they're really worth. Um, and I, I think YouTube and the gaming community does have some kind of effect on that because I think they are creating um, a much larger audience for these games. Uh, not only, obviously, there's people like myself in, a mid, in our mid-30s who are interested in getting retro games and, well, it's, it's very much, it is for me, very much a trip down memory lane finding either games that I've had in the past and want to get again or games that I wanted in the past and never had the opportunity to buy because I didn't have the money or one reason or another. Um, or it's people collecting for the reason of these things being collectible. So there's all that group of people, but then there's this whole new wave of younger people who don't ha didn't have the experience of these games when they were younger. And I think the YouTube gaming community is introducing these people to, the, to these games that they would otherwise never even probably have thought about. There are quite a lot of um, video makers or directors or whatever you want to call them out there who are making some really good videos about modern stuff and then also retro and you know they're gonna their modern titles that they're reviewing will pull in a, a certain audience of younger gamers and then those people by continuing watching the channel are going to be exposed to a lot of the retro stuff and I've been really surprised by the number of young and um, what I consider young I'm talking teenagers here they're the sort of people who weren't even born when Master System and Mega Drive games are out I see them uh, snapping up these games in the local cash converters or other second-hand stores fighting over or <laughs> rushing to be the first to buy some of these games um, so yeah I, I think I think the YouTube community has had an effect I think the number of quality videos that are put out there is gonna have an effect on people it's that enthusiasm comes out and it makes you want to it makes you want to play the games and therefore buy the games so you can play them. The second point I'd like to touch on is the idea of only playing a sequel once you've played the original. And this was raised um, not directly but just in passing by um, Meg or KP. I think she goes by. She's got a channel called KP's Game Pod. If you haven't seen it, I'll put links in the the linky bit down below. And she was just kind of showing what she'd picked up recently. And she happened to mention, I think she'd picked up the second Suffering game and said that she hadn't got the, the original first. Therefore, she's not going to play the second one until she's played the first one. And this is something that um, is really important to me. Um, and I don't like to jump into a story in the middle. I want to always start at the beginning and work through the games until I get to the later ones. I do have quite a few games on my shelves that I've got a second or a third in a series and don't have the first one and so haven't played them because I've been waiting to find 
the first ones. And I just want to know, is this something that the rest of you do? Or do you just not care about what's come before and you'll jump in and play a game wherever? Um, so, so let me know. Okay, well, the next thing I'd like to do is show you a few of the things I've picked up recently. Now, those of you who watched the last vlog will probably remember that I'd got a PC Engine, and it was something that I'd wanted for such a long time. And as I'm sure you can imagine, as soon as I'd finished doing that unboxing video, I went and tried it straight away. Unfortunately, things didn't go quite as I'd hoped they would. The machine worked, I could power it up because I've got my step-down transformer, but when it came to getting a decent video signal out of it, that was another story altogether. I just run a straight piece of RF cable out the back of it and into the aerial circuit on the television. I thought that would work. Mm, it didn't. I got a snowy image, which was it was okay, but it wasn't as great as I was expecting it to be, but there was no sound. Did, after doing a little searching on the internet, I found out, well, yeah, this is the problem, because most British televisions, although they can take an NTS signal, NTSC signal, it's not the same one as you would get um, from Japan, and it, it doesn't handle the Japanese NTSC signal very well. Not exactly sure why, but it doesn't. So, oh, okay, well I thought I'm going to have to resort to using the box that came with it, this, this thing here, the RF switch. Um, but unfortunately this, this end piece has a screw thread on it, and that's not what we've got here in the UK. So I sourced um, an adapter for it that I could just screw in the end of it and plug it in. Um, but when the adapter arrived, I realized, oh damn, it's a slightly different sized thread, so I couldn't use it. Well, okay, not so much of a problem. I thought I've got the uh, this thing, this came with it the TV matching transformer. Um, and what I, all I needed to do was get this part, which I ripped off an old aerial. And so I thought, yeah, no problem. They'll fit together and they'll plug it into the back of the television. No. Again, different thread sizes. So I couldn't use the two of them together. Oh, how frustrating. Well, the next thing I did was decide to get an AV booster. So I looked around a bit and the only ones I'd seen were like 50 pounds including postage and packing which is more or less the same price as the PC engine cost in the first place. I thought I'm not going to do that, that's a little bit too much. But then one came up for 25 pounds and here it is. I bought it from Hit Japan um, and just took two days or three days to come from Japan and well it's kind of a ugly grey box I know and what it does if you haven't seen one before it plugs into the back of your PC engine and allows you to output AV so video and the two stereo sockets on there doesn't look good makes your PC engine nearly twice its original size, but it does work. And I must admit, it's in much better condition than I was expecting. It, it's better than it looked in the in the photos, and it works a lot better as well. I was quite impressed with the quality of the image that it outputs, so very happy with that. Next, I went to a car boot sale, and to be honest, there wasn't much there in the way of retro gaming. It was a pretty awful car boot sale and almost wish I didn't go. But I did pick up a couple of things. The first was this, the Belkin Nostromo, which is a, a miniature keyboard pad with uh, a little wheel and uh, other buttons on it for use in your left hand for playing things like, uh, well, any FPS games it'd be good for. Also, I guess, for RTS games. I haven't used it from that, and uh, it was only two pounds. But I'd already got one a few years before the, um, I guess, special edition version, the 
N52, this is the N52, this is the N52 TE, which I guess is tournament edition, and it's uh, powered by Razer, so it's got some blue lights in there. Wow. But I uh, thought I'd get this one for a backup as it was only £2. And then the other thing I picked up was a joystick. A boxed Microsoft Sidewinder. Now, I remember wanting one of these back in my PC days, but they were always a little bit more expensive than I wanted to pay for a joystick. But I'm very pleased to find one that's boxed and has got all of its um, components in there for two pounds. So, pretty happy with that one. Unfortunately, that was all I got from that car boot sale. Um, then I went to one this weekend and picked up a few more things. A master system converter, yeah? If you're, those of you who watched episode two will uh, have seen and heard how much I like the master system converter. I'd bought one off eBay um, a couple of months ago. Um, and that was about, well, it was £10 plus £2 postage and packing. This was, guess how much? 50p. <laughs> and it came with um, a multi-tap as well, which was nice. Um, not that I really needed a multi-tap, but the person threw it in for 50p. Um, I've tested it, it works. It's this, um, the Master System converters in as good condition as the one that I bought originally. So happy with that. That will do as a, a backup. The next thing I found was another gun. I'd been watching Yuko Retro Gaming Addict's 200 subscriber special and he mentioned about getting a um, sniper rifle for the Xbox. And I happened to stumble across this one. Uh-huh, very similar. This is the PlayStation 2 version, albeit in not quite as good condition as the ones that he'd bought. Um, it's missing the end barrel, but it's not really essential because the sensor is here. Um, and it's missing the end off of the stock, but again, it's just cosmetic. Um, it's, got, it's got the wires to plug it in, the USB, and the uh, whatever that thing's called that all gun games, uh, all guns on the PS2 use. I haven't tried it yet, but um, looking forward to it. It's a very comfortable piece of kit, and what's more, it's a shotgun. So I'm going to look forward to using that. A pound well spent, I think. But the bargains didn't stop there. Probably my favourite things that I got were two arcade sticks. The uh, first of which, and the tattiest of the two, was the uh, Saturn arcade stick. Um, haven't tested it because my Saturn is in my parents' loft, so I'll have to get that down. But, but better than that, I got quite a heavy duty Namco arcade stick in pretty good condition as well. A little bit grubby but nothing that can't be cleaned off. I've actually tested this one. All the buttons are functioning properly. Um, had a little go on Defender, actually, and um, it's much better than using a joypad. I'm gonna get plenty of use out of that. Well, that's it from me. Hopefully you enjoyed looking at the things I got from the car boot sale. Um, let me know if that's the sort of thing you wanna see in future. If you don't, then I won't bother showing you. Um, and also, I want to hear your comments on the two things I mentioned at the beginning, the retro gaming prices increasing and uh, the importance of narrative and not playing um, a sequel before you play the original. So, uh, give me comments. If you want to leave a video response, that would be great as well. And, uh, well, from my spare room to your wherever, this is Simon. Signing off. Bye-bye.